Uh, if you want to get really crazy like I did in Turnier, I began to color code my cat tasks. Okay guys, so now we're just gonna get into the nitty gritty of things, how to be efficient and how to organize your list. Like I said, being an intern, you really wanna run your life by your list. Never, ever, ever lose this piece of information, ever. I still run my life by my list as a second year and will continue to do so moving forward. So there's kind of two major ways people like to do things. There's a patient sheet where there is information divided by patient. And then there's also a face sheet where you just have all the patients on one list. One of the easiest ways, and I think beginner ways to start with organizing lists is you use the SNOW acronym. So what the SNOW acronym is, it's used for every single patient as you kind of go through on rounds. S stands for see the patient, N stands for do the note, O stands for putting in orders, and then H stands for updating the handoff or whatever task sheet you guys like to organize. So you've seen the patient, you cross out the S. You've done the note, you cross out the N. Let's say you haven't done the orders yet, but you've done the note for another patient, go ahead and cross out that N. And I think the SNOW acronym works really well uh, if you're just trying to keep an overall view of generalized tasks that you've completed. The other way people like to do it is organizing things by the patient that you're seeing and by areas of the sheet of paper. So let's say you want to record that this patient has had pain recently and that they are you know, anxious or not in good spirits. Stick to the left side of your paper and just write down really quickly pain, anxiety, anxious, stuff like that. And that way, as you go flip through your patient list and you're writing your notes later on, you can see everything on the left side, kind of near the patient's name will be everything subjective. I usually move over to the next column and include things that are more objective because in this column, there's labs and stuff. So I would go ahead and circle any labs that were abnormal and then also include either pert and positives or pert and negatives. So like patient past flatus, but patient did not have a bowel movement. Um, you can also include here things, physical exam findings, which are really important. So for vascular, you want to keep track of the pulse exam. So what kind of pulse exam they have, where they have it, if it's a change, you know, that way you can keep things organized. And then towards the very right of your page where there's plans, you can go ahead and update that with the team as you're rounding. So let's say plan will be for OR tomorrow for this patient or plan to do a uh, plan to get an echo for like cardiology clearance or something like that everything will then be on the right side of your sheet. So as you're flipping through your patient sheets throughout the day, you can remember, here's the subjective, here's the objective, here's kind of the plan and fill in your notes accordingly. So the next thing I wanna talk about is also a little bit more general and how people like to organize their tasks as a whole. So what they'll do is they'll go ahead and fold over their paper so that you have the blank side um, next to each patient. Draw in lines so that you're making essentially an extension of the patient list and go ahead and just fill in the tasks for each patient. That way when they pull their list out of their pocket, they can really easily reference what needs to be done for every single patient on one sheet. So again, two different ways you can do things. You can organize things by this sheet, which is filled with all of the patient information, but does require you to kind of flip through the pages, but it is the most thorough. Or as you kind of progress through intern year and get more comfortable with tasks, you can do this way which is adding the lines separately on your own and then filling in the patient tasks per patient. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is a little bit more niche. If you are an organization freak like I am, then you'll probably appreciate this. It may be a little bit too much for some other people, but we're just gonna go through it anyways. Um, so a lot of people like to organize things by tasks, not only in residency, but in life in general. And so people will either be a fan of these squares or a fan of these circles. Whichever one you choose, that's fine by you. Um, I like squares, I don't know why, that's just kind of what I work with. And what I do is I do, I draw a blank square for a task that needs to be done. Um, and let's say for this example, it will be to call nephrology for a patient to get dialysis. Now, the way I like to organize these check marks and boxes, I like to do it so that I know what stage of the task I'm in. So by putting in a blank square, that tells me that I haven't done it yet. Once I add in a line down the middle, that tells me that I've done the task, but I haven't received a result. So for this specific example, my check mark, my checkbox with the line through it tells me that I've called nephrology, but I have not gotten an answer yet. 
And let's say nephrology calls me back, they're like, sure, we can add this patient for third shift dialysis today. Um, then I go ahead and fill it in. And to me, that tells me that my entire task is done. So once I see a box like this that's been filled in, I essentially can just forget about it and not worry about you know what still needs to be done and just leave it alone. This is good for tasks in progress. That's how I like to do it. And I think as your patient list gets larger and larger, for example, you have a patient list of like 40 or 50, this really comes in handy. One of the things we have to do as a surgery intern, um, and even, you know, I still do as a junior resident, is prepping patients for the OR. So there are very specific things that need to be done for patients before the OR, you know, MPO, before, MPO after midnight, labs, postings, consents, and all of that. And so because it's such a specific task and it's so, so important to make sure that all cases go and nothing gets canceled and all patients are pre-opted appropriately, I've developed my own kind of table to make sure that nothing gets canceled because that is probably the worst thing that can happen to you in turn year is that a case does not get pre op appropriately and then gets canceled because not many things will be your fault as an intern, but that will probably be your fault if it's not done correctly. So for us, Important things for our patients for going to the operating room is making sure that they're pre-opt, meaning that they have their pre-op labs, MPO at midnight, all of that stuff. I need to make sure that they're posted for the OR board. I need to make sure that, make sure that they're consented. And then I also have to make sure for our hospital policy that they have a recent COVID-19 test. And that way I start making a table. So when it gets to be like Sunday and there's like five patients going to the OR, I can see on my table exactly what still needs to be done. So let's say patient number one, patient number two, and patient number three. Um, if the patient's been pre-opt, then I'll do a check mark. If they've been posted, I'll do a check mark. If they've been consented, I'll do a check mark. And if they have COVID, then I'll do a check mark. Another way I do this is if the patient has been pre-opt, then I will go ahead and do this. And if they've been posted, I will do this. If they've been consented, I'll do this. But if we're waiting for a COVID result, I will just go like this. So that tells me that the patient's COVID labs have been ordered, but they haven't resulted. Once they've resulted, then I go ahead and check it like that. Like I said, it can be a little bit excessive, but it really works if you have a lot of patients and you just need to look really quickly for what you need to do. Um, and then the very last way, you know, obviously these are the main ways that I do it. Um, so on quick glance, let's say I have these three patients and let's just say we're going by this check mark system. I'll know that like, you know, all these patients have everything, but patient number three is still missing a consent. And that's what I know I have to do for the rest of the day. Again, it seems really excessive, but when you have a lot of things to do and you have a lot of tasks that still need to be done, spending the time and putting the time up front to make sure that your stuff is organized in a way that you can reliably refer back to it within a few seconds and know what needs to be done will really, really set you up for success. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is how to organize tasks when you have a very large patient list. In my previous topics that I talked about where you can either flip through every single patient or do it by face sheet, it just, it's a lot to be flipping back and forth between papers. So when you get to have a list of about 35 or 50 patients and onwards and upwards, you really, really want to organize things by tasks instead of by patients. This I think has been the most efficient way of doing things because instead of going through things by patient, if you go through things by task, you can knock out more things at once. The way I have it is I have my sheet of paper, I'll fold it in half, and what I do is this side is for things that have to be done on the floor, dressing changes, consenting patients, talking to family members, and this side is a list of things that can be done sitting next to a computer or a phone. If I do it this way, whenever I pull my list out of my pocket and just really, really quickly glance at it, I know what still needs to be done. For things that need to be done on the floor, it would be like dressing changes, so a checkbox next to whoever needs their dressing change. Another thing that needs to be done on the floor would be like something like consents or talking to patient family members. That can all be added to the left side of your sheet of paper. Things that can be done on the computer, frequent ones would be like consults. So let's say you want to consult nephrology for dialysis for three patients of yours. If I add in my previous thing of check boxes and putting a line through them, I will write nephrology and then write the patient's names next underneath or next to them. Once I get them on the phone, I can be like, hey, this is Yang with so-and-so service. I wanna tell you about these three patients who need dialysis and that way you can bang them out all at once. Instead of flipping through all of your pages and being like, which patient needs dialysis again? I think this one and I think this one. Going back to, again, if you organize things by task instead of organizing things by patient, 
patient, it becomes a lot more efficient when you have a large patient list. So consult is a big one. Notes are always a big one. You can always write those down or just, you know, as you're going through the day, um, update like consult notes that need to be written or anything like that. And then also important on this side of the sheet, the right side of the paper, um, would be things to follow up on. So it can be like following up on the ultrasound study to make sure this patient doesn't have a DVT, following up on the x-ray to see how this patient's doing, even like following up on a repeat lab, um, like a patient's post-transfusion hemoglobin or something like that. These are all things that you know you can clump together and the reason why I like to split it up this way is because I know that way that if I have an extra 30 minutes, um, I can knock out these things on the floor. If I am sitting by a computer, I can look to the right of my list and see, okay, I still have these things that can be done. If I have like five minutes, maybe I can just like bang out these notes really quick or like follow up on these labs really quick. And so that's the reason why I like to divide this paper in half. If you want to get really crazy like I did intern year, I began to color code my tasks. And so this is where this pen comes in handy. If you guys are interested in this pen, I love it. It's one of my favorites. I'll link it down below. Um, but it has black, blue, green, and red. And so I would assign obviously different significances of these colors to different things. For anything that would be black, it would just be nothing urgent, nothing that exciting. It would be like a dressing change. For green, I would do things to follow up on so in my previous area where i had it like a list of things to follow up on instead of writing follow up on cbc i would literally just flick my pen switch it to green put a little square and put ultrasound and the name of the patient and in the two seconds that takes instead of like the 10 seconds from previous i know by looking at my list all the things that are green are things i need to follow up on in a couple of hours or at the end of the day Red is for things that are extremely important and things that need to be done right away. So uh, an example would be like someone comes in with necrotizing fasciitis. We have to make sure that patient goes to the OR and here are all the tasks that are um, still pending so that the patient can go as soon as possible. So that thing that goes in red. And the very last color is blue. Um, uh, this is not really necessary. I think, you know, I kind of got rid of it towards the end. But if you really like to stay on top of things, um, blue is for plans that have changed. And so it's usually, it's kind of like a editorial color. So I would, let's say we're going back to my previous example, we're doing a dressing change on this patient. We're actually gonna hold off and we're gonna you know take them to the operating room instead. So we're not gonna do a dressing change or we're gonna do a different type of dressing and place a wound vac on. I would go ahead and cross out the black and just write in blue, wound vac placement in OR. And so that way, you know, let's say you're running the list kind of in the middle of the day and plans change you want to have a way to keep track of what's changing throughout your list and again that's why i color code with the blue all right that brings us to the end of this video thank you guys so much for watching i know it's kind of a long one but i hope you found these tips and tricks helpful uh, for those of you who are about to start intern year, congratulations. Get ready for the time of your life. <laughs> uh, intern year was really, really challenging, but I learned a lot about myself, and I'm sure you guys will too. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye, guys. Are you talking really fast? Because I have a lot to do. Because you're in like hospital mode right hospital now? Mode, yes. Yes. You don't have to worry about the camera. Oh. You slow down a little bit. Okay, should I?